Hello everybody, welcome to Euro Channel. In this video I am going to give you some facts about penile cancer. Who gets it? How common is it? What causes it? And how much of the penis has to be surgically removed for treatment? In early disease it will be possible to undergo local treatment without having to cut off parts or the whole penis. My name is Stefan Buntrock, I'm a urologist and sexologist. I appreciate your subscription to my channel and don't forget to hit the Euro like button. Penile cancer is usually what we call squamous cell carcinoma, meaning that it is derived from the outer layers of the tissue. There are several known subtypes, but bottom line is, if you discover any unusual spots, lumps, patches on your penis, you better make an appointment with your doctor. Penis cancer might take the shape of bright red patches as well as cauliflower-like appearance in the later stages. Of course, this is a short video, not a medical consultation, and there are lots of other diagnoses which to think of medically, like simple infections, dermatosis of all kinds, and even more generalized diseases like psoriasis and even drug-induced side effects. Therefore, it is important to have a professional take a look at it. I'm not showing any pictures, by the way, as it would be against YouTube community guidelines and I'm sure some of you would find them revolting as these pictures are generally no pretty sight. Depending on where on the world you are watching this video from, your risk for penile cancer may be quite high or very low. It is highest in Uganda where it is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in men. But also in South America, Southeast Asia and other parts of Africa, the incidence is quite high and comparable with the occurrence rates of bladder cancer. North America and Central Europe have the lowest incidence rates. Actually, taking all cancers together, in these countries it is a rare disease. According to the American Cancer Society, there is a predicted number of 2,070 cases for the United States for this year, 2022. Race and ethnicity are definitely risk factors. In the US, the incidence is highest among white Hispanics, followed by Alaskans and members of the First Nation, followed by African Americans and white non-Hispanics. One very important risk factor is a virus. You might have heard about it. It is called human papilloma virus also known as HPV. Not to be confused with HIV or AIDS. There is no link between HIV and penis cancer. HPV is a virus that can be found everywhere and is mostly transferred by sexual means, also including oral sex. The most common subtypes found in penile cancer are 16 and 18. These are the ones which cause cervix cancer in women. But unlike in cervix cancer, HPV causes penile cancer in a much lower number of cases. By the way, female partners of men with penile cancer do not have more cervical cancers. Apart from HPV, there are other risk factors. Phimosis is one of them. Phimosis is a condition where the foreskin cannot be retracted, be it from childhood on or due to chronic inflammatory skin conditions like the commonly seen lichen sclerosis, which per se is another risk factor. So is smoking. Smoking increases your risk by the factor of five. Multiple sex partners and an early age of sexual intercourse yield a three to five fold increased risk. Penile cancer can be quite aggressive with very poor outcomes in certain subtypes. So once again, it is important to get an early diagnosis. Don't wait and hope for the best. If in doubt, let the professionals have a look at it. Depth of penetration will dictate the following steps. If detected early, it is possible to preserve the penis in total without cutting off parts or even amputate the whole organ. As much organ preserving therapy as possible is the goal of modern therapy, as we now have reliable data on safety for that approach. Local chemotherapy or immuno or laser therapy will be sufficient in many of the very early cases where the tumor is still contained, something that is called carcinoma in situ. With progressing stages, more and more surgical intervention will be necessary, starting from local excisions to amputating the glands and removing the whole penis in advanced disease. Lymph nodes will have to be accounted for as well, as the risk for early metastasis according to stage may be as high as 10 to 30 percent. 
Lymph node management depends on what is found during the examination. Lymph nodes may be inconspicuous or they may be enlarged and palpable. The pros and cons of what to do next will very much depend on the individual constellation. But some form of surgical lymph node staging will most probably be the favored approach. What can you do to reduce your personal risk? A proper genital hygiene along with condom use and abstinence from smoking will lower the risk. Phimosis in adult life should be treated with circumcision, so is lichen sclerosis. Phimosis is not only a risk factor, it also conceals cancerous lesions so that they get a chance to progress locally before a diagnosis is made. Also consider vaccination against HPV. This is preferably done in childhood before sexual activity is initiated. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.